Hello, U.S. History students, and welcome to today's little video introduction of the Semester Movie Assignment. That's right. Today, we're going to be talking about how to make your semester movie project for U.S. history. So first things first, a uh, little bit of details on how the project's going to work. I will show you the link here on my website in a minute, but first, just a quick rundown on the rules. Uh, the thing that you're going to make here is either a documentary or some kind of historical reenactment film where you're acting as the characters that were living at the time to dramatize the historical situation. So as far as group size is concerned, you may have one to five people, and if you decide to have more than five people, just let me know, because that simply means that you need to have a longer film. So think of it this way. Uh, there is a five minute minimum for your film. Now, if you're doing this as one person, that means that you're probably doing a documentary. Um, it's very hard to do a historical reenactment if you are only one person. I've seen it tried and it's pretty awful, so don't do it. All right, but uh, if you are uh, one person making a historical documentary or an animation or something like that, feel free, but your movie still needs to be five minutes in length. However, if you decide to go over five people for your group size, that means that you need to figure that you'll add a minute per person that you're adding to your group. So let's say that we have a 10 person group. That's a 10 minute film minimum. A, a documentary cannot be a group of more than two people, um, but a performance, like I said, can be bigger than that. And it needs to be fantastic, all right? It cannot have a bunch of filler. It cannot be something that is stupid and boring and full of bloopers. I mean, if you give me a five minute film with 10 minutes of bloopers, which by the way I've seen done and it's awful, then I will be very upset with you, okay? I want a glorious movie. Now, the goal for this thing is to create a dramatically historical event on film. Now, uh, you can pick anything. Anything in United States history, from the start of United States history, when we began with the entry of pre-Columbian Indian civilization, all the way up through the end of the Civil War, which is where we will be by the end of this semester. So, the end of the Civil War, meaning we're not getting into uh, anything with, like, Reconstruction or anything like that quite yet, uh, but the end of the battles of the Civil War, we can call the Lincoln assassination the final event that you can cover. As we're making these films, there... Uh, there are certain things that are required as far as with the grading. All right, first of all, you got to be creative. I want to see some incredibly creative work here to make this story come to life for us as viewers. Uh, also, you need to be, you know, pretty historically accurate. All right, so you can do this within reason. Figure it this way. Hollywood can make a movie like The Patriot, which is not totally accurate, but dang it, it's good, and it recreates the time period for us in a way that is entertaining. You're welcome to do that. However, you can't have, you know, America lose the American Revolution. You can't have George Washington actually being bred and raised by aliens in order to help us win. And Lincoln did not survive the assassination. Another big thing with inaccuracy is if you're making a film about the Civil War, we shouldn't see modern houses in it. We shouldn't see you driving up in your car. We shouldn't see that kind of thing uh, um, within reason. Okay, so do what you can to make it as historically accurate as possible, but still be creative. Now, another thing too, as far as group participation, everyone who is signed up to be in, in that group for the film must appear on camera at least once. Now, the reason why is because Trying to film this thing, get the whole group together, is difficult sometimes, and uh, it, it, occasionally someone will say, oh, I did the editing. I helped uh, by, uh, you know, uh, providing cookies for everybody, but I didn't show up on camera, and I actually just paid everybody to do the work for me. Unacceptable. All right, now, the time qualifications, big part of the grade as well. Don't go too under, certainly. Do not go too far over either. Um, another one, keep it appropriate, nudity. Not appropriate, okay? One time I had a group of students make me a film in which they were doing World War I training camps, and rather than doing anything about the training and like the war and the history of it, it was them doing push-ups with their shirts off. Training camp. Stupid! Don't do it! Ever! All right, another thing too, drug content, come on. I mean, uh, G-dubs was not you know, hitting the dank or anything like that. Don't be doing that. Uh, and, and that kind of stuff should be cut. Swear words also should be cut. So it's really important, by the way, that you make sure that when you guys are on set doing your filming, that everybody remembers the appropriate content rule, okay? Good example of that, uh, of what not to do, is a few years ago I had some students that were making a Lewis and Clark film. And you know what has nothing to do with Lewis and Clark? Talking about inappropriate sexual content has nothing to do with Lewis and Clark. Another thing that had nothing to do with 
LNC, is modern cuss words, F-bombs, B-words, you name it, bad stuff, right? So these students were filming and got themselves on camera having conversations about these things. Um, and they figured, oh, don't worry, the person who's editing our film can put bleep noises in to cut out those bad words, right? Well, uh, turns out that person didn't know what they were doing while editing. And so when the final film was given to me, um, the, there was a mistake in the editing process where every time they were talking, they said the cuss word, and then three seconds later, you could hear the bleep. So F this, boop, that kind of thing. All right, so uh, don't do that. All right, and then the other thing to remember too is just overall production value. You might be thinking, I don't know how to make a film. I don't have equipment to make a film. I don't know what I'm doing to make it look real. I don't care. Try. Try hard. Because you'd be surprised what you can do if you just try hard and do the right amount of planning. Now, luckily for you, I've got quite a few things at our disposal. And then if you combine that with your creativity, you can make an incredible film as long as you plan it. So now I'm going to show you an example of a film that uh, some students and I made together. Um, and it, I think, gives an example of some high production value. Dear Elizabeth, I wish that I could share with you pleasantries. I wish that I could tell you things that could put your mind at ease. But I promise you that I would never lie to you. The front is so much worse than I could have imagined. It's not the food. It's not the route, it's the emptiness of it all. We are bombarded day and night by the allies whose shells never fail as birds. And they throw all the weight of their industrial might from thousands of pulsating guns that shattered the earth around me and destroyed the humanity within me. Once the shells cease, they attack across the barren fields of shattered lives and wasted potential. We need them with sputtering fire of thousands of rounds per minute, and we spray them with the might of German nationalism. Then we attack. After cowering in trenches like rats, when the enemy is in the open ground, we are sent over the top with bayonets fixed and ready to kill anything in sight. The moment the enemy is within reach, you lose all a sense of humanity and restraint and the primal instinct consumes you. It makes me think I would care anything not in German uniform at that moment. If my friend, brother, or father were in front of me, I would still run him through with my bayonet and keep running through the enemy trenches, for I know that they would do the same to me. I fear that I am too much of a coward. Rather than standing up for my beliefs, Rather than mutilating myself by shooting off my hand that pulls the trigger, rather than leading a mutiny against my offenses, I obey, I go step, I kill, because I am a coward. My dearest Billy, it is with an incredibly heavy heart that I read your last letter. I have nothing here without you by my side. I am nothing here without you. Elizabeth, I wish I had some solace to offer you, but I have nothing left. My anguish increases daily, and I only wish that I could serve a country that wants me. But what kind of country only wants you for cannon fodder and girth? Is there no other way to use this life that has been given to me? Except to take the life of others in a war I never agreed with. It's not something that I can stand around and wait to see the conclusion of. I must give all that I have on the front, or I will lose all that I have. My, My love, love, I will not stand idly by as this, this war takes, takes everything, everything from me. me. I have a fight to this war's conclusion in order to save my life, even if I lose myself in the process. I must leave Erfurt and serve as a Red Cross nurse to prove my dedication to my new country. I can no longer write to you, for it is too painful. Even if I lose contact with you for a time, no matter what happens, I am always with you. I love you. Ich liebe dich.
Well, from that lovely little presentation, you can see that's just a trailer to the overall film. There was some serious work put into production value. I mean, we researched the topic. It was World War I. We had a 75-page screenplay. I mean, we took time to film this thing. We dug trenches. We bought costumes. Uh, we had a very small budget. I mean, small in terms of, like, Hollywood. We had a $500 budget, and we overspent that. But still, you know, uh, we put the work into it. Do I expect you to have a $500 budget to do this? No, but you can borrow some of the equipment. As long as you just take the time to come up with a cool idea, we'll find a way to make it happen. So your job from now over the next couple of weeks is to decide what's the best way to make this film and what do I need in order to make that happen. So some other things to think about, some do's and don'ts for this film. Uh, some tips that I've seen over the years, and I'll give you examples of what people have done well and what people have not done well. All right, so one thing that's super important here is costuming. Costuming is super critical to making your film have a high production value and make it believable. So if this dude shows up to film a, film, a student film about the Boston Massacre and he's dressed like that, does he look like a colonist? No, no he doesn't. So you know what does look like a colonist? That. Hey, you know, there are costumes on Amazon. Get some. There are costumes at the Halloween store and Goodwill. Get some. I've got some, uh, some in the basement of the school. Get some. All right, so costuming, super critical. Another super critical thing is to think about your filming location. The location where you film should in some way represent the theme that you're going for. So again, avoid some modern stuff unless it is relevant to the story. So for instance, here we have a movie that's supposed to be about the Battle of Gettysburg, and we have little kids running around, and we have modern day houses, and it obviously is not Gettysburg, okay? Uh, it sounds silly and kind of like a duh thing. You wouldn't make a movie about Gettysburg in your backyard, but you'd be surprised how often I've seen that done. Please don't, it needs to be better than that. Okay, another example, I mean here we've got actual Gettysburg. That looks like Gettysburg, yes. Are you going to go to Pennsylvania to do it? No. But do we have things around here that look like they could almost represent that scene? Absolutely. We got the mountains, we got the rims, we got fields, we got barns, we got things. You could dig trenches. Ah, things. You could make it happen. Make it look believable. Another thing, too, to keep in mind is that scheduling is super important. All right, your schedules are busy. Some of you don't work well together, let's face it. Some of you are not going to have an easy time with this. You need to plan accordingly. Worst thing you can do is wait until Christmas break to do this thing because it is due right after Christmas break. Worst thing you can do is wait until Christmas break to make this film. Do not wait. That's the most important thing I can say today. Do not wait until the last minute. There might be weather concerns. There might be scheduling concerns. If you wait till the end, it's not going to get done with the kind of quality you need. You need to plan this thing ahead. Now, another thing to avoid here is getting arrested. Now, this seems like something I maybe shouldn't have to say, but again, you'd be surprised how often this kind of thing happens. So over the years, I've had students that think, oh yeah, it's fine for me to go on public land wearing military outfits and carrying around guns, actual guns, and bringing fireworks with me and I won't get arrested. Yeah, you will. Okay, I've had some really stupid people do some really stupid things in the past and they have gotten arrested. Another thing you want to avoid is ending up in the principal's office with your movie sitting on his desk because you got in trouble. <laughs> no! If you end up needing any editing tips or tricks, feel free to talk to one of the members of my film editing class or myself as well as we try to make some glorious films. Now let's take a look at some great examples of how to do this. Again to go back to the movie Kameraden which I showed you a trailer of before, some framing props and costuming tips. Alright so when you look at this scene uh, in front of you here where we've got men that are lying down in uniform and about to charge across no man's land, if you you turned the camera around, you would notice that this is actually filmed right next to a school. So we got permission from the school to film that time, and they were fine with us being where we were and lighting off the smoke bombs like we did. But, uh, uh, you know, framing this thing to make it seem like there's nothing modern around us and that we're actually in the Ardennes Forest, we did, we chose our shots 
carefully to make sure that uh, you could not see anything else uh, that was going on around that scene. Another thing we chose was appropriate props. I mean, like here, for instance, we filmed at a place called the Moss Mansion. It's a museum uh, near us, and and uh, we we chose to put this character in some costuming that seemed appropriate to the World War One era. She's holding props that seemed appropriate to the World War One era, and you can't see all the modern stuff that's happening around her outside of that scene. Uh, again, costuming, making the right choices to make it feel very World War I-ish. And then also uh, uh, here we filmed in the catacombs of Billings because we wanted to have a dark nighttime trench scene. So I got myself a cool little propane lamp and I dressed up my character and we went down into the catacombs of Billings and made it look like it was a trench outdoors simply by flashing a phone light across him uh, to represent the flares. So you can make choices using the things around you to try and make this movie very believable, very real looking. So you've heard some of the don'ts. Let's look at some of the do's. Uh, I'm going to take you over to the website now and you're going to see some examples of uh, uh, not only how to create this project a little bit better, but also examples of previous work in the past that's been very good. So first things first, you gotta go to the website, which is fairbanksonline.net. You go down to the projects page under United States History. After you click on that link, you'll scroll down and see semester movie assignment. Click on that link. When you see that semester movie assignment, first of all, here are all of the requirements. There are some brainstorming ideas, due dates, etc. all kinds of stuff that you're going to need for both semesters as you're making these films. Now, one other thing that I wanna emphasize is planning this thing. If you click on this link here, you'll be able to download a movie project proposal. Now, the movie project proposal is really important as a method of planning your film. All right, so first things first, you're going to give us the topic, the group members that are associated with it. You're going to sign a little disclaimer saying nothing illegal is going to happen uh, or inappropriate is going to happen. Then you're going to describe your topic, what everyone's going to be doing, where you plan to film, and then give us a storyboard. All right, now the project storyboard can be really detailed. I mean, you could make an incredibly detailed storyboard that has all the cool little stuff in it to show us uh, what this is going to look like with with really nice art and that kind of thing. I, I, I can't do that, okay? So I'm not a, a great enough artist to be able to draw a super detailed storyboard. If that's you, great, do it. If not, if, and you just wanna put little stick figures and then a description below on what's happening in that scene, that's great. So what you need to do is uh, write up as detailed of a storyboard as possible, telling me where you're filming, what you're filming, what's happening, and then you're going to submit that to me as an assignment in a few weeks. Now, um, here, if you follow this link, it will take you to my YouTube page where we've got the fall semester films, and then later I'll give you a link for the spring semester films. So these films right here are some good ones from the past, some of them better than others. Later, uh, you'll be able to take a look at the rest of this playlist and see some of the incredible films that are out there, some of them comedies, some of them dramas, some will make you cry, some will make you laugh, some will just make you think, boy, this is weird, but dang it, it's fun. And thus is the point of making these films. So without further ado, let's see some films.